Hey, hey, it's Assistant Coach. How are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to the Sprint to Glory France. You saw the coach walk in there. Le Bleu. We are the Bleu. <laughs> if you guys know the chart, Allez, Le Bleu. That one, I have named the team Le Bleu because obviously France has the blue color in their kits at all times. We have gone with that one. It is the Sprint to Glory for the French nationality, of course. And of course, as you guys might know, the rules with the Sprinter Glories. Before we go any further into the video and I explain to you guys the rules and everything, guys, once again, the Sprinter Glory is sponsored by FOTMOB. Thank you so much for sponsoring our video. Once again, an absolutely amazing company that has, in my opinion, the best football app out there. Let me explain to you how this one works. Support this one. These guys are amazing. Look, I'm telling you now, I don't think I've ever used a football app this good. FOTMOB is the essential football app with live scores, deep stats, and news for over 400 leagues. Even tracking specific players like Ansu Fati was possible in this. I was looking at the Premier League table. I realized Chelsea was playing a game. Their match ended up with a 3-1 victory. It even showed me the player of the match, Chaloba. I could look into his detailed statistics here. And also a new feature that has just been recently added is the shot maps, where I can actually see where Timo Vanna missed the goal from. Apart from the last one, obviously, where you can see that he scored. Congratulations, Timo Vanna. But lads, all jokes aside, I absolutely love this app. It gives you news, it gives you score lines, it gives you all the detail when it comes to football, and I can even use it during my workouts on my Apple Watch. Especially now that Liverpool is doing so well, it's always nice to get those notifications telling me that my team is scoring and winning. Anyways, though, make sure to download the FOTMOP app. The link is in the description down below, guys. Support them, support us. That's the way it goes. Let's continue with the video. This is a series in which we start off season one created a club that is called Le Bleu as you can see and we have set it up so that the team is very young this time last time for the England one I think we had it unbalanced or young I want to see what the difference is when you put it to very young as we go on with these sprinter glories we're going to test out all different opportunities we have created the team as you guys know the rules are that we can only buy players that are 23 years old or younger at the beginning of the first season. They can be older later on, but they have to be 23 or younger in the beginning of the first season. We can buy players who are French from all the leagues in the world, or we can buy players from Ligue 2 and Ligue 1, no matter the nationality. We can buy players from the free agents, which where we'll be limiting ourselves to a maximum of three players each season. And also, we can get players from the Youth Academy. I am so excited because France has been dominating FIFA in the past few years. There was a time where Brazil used to be the biggest nation in FIFA. Now it's definitely France. There are so many incredible players in here and I cannot wait to create our own beasts. If you guys are excited about the Sprint to Glory, make sure to hit that like button and support the channel by subscribing and turning on notifications. Multiple seasons of FIFA goodness coming up right now. And here is the team, Le Bleu, with Johnny Sports as their coach and you, my assistant coaches. We are going straight into the starting lineup. For the first time, we have gone for the very young setting. The team that we created is a one and a half star team with only a million in their budget, which is the lowest amount you can choose on FIFA 22 when creating a squad. The kits, I went for something different this time around, but I did go with the Nike uh, section here. Now we do have Guyon up top, 28 years old. We have Grenier, 27. Marquez, who is 26, 25. 24. Where are the young players? 28. 30. Bro. Why is this setting even a thing? Okay. Jarvela here is a very, very young player. Barbosa is 26. Nevo is 34. And then on the bench, I'm assuming we have some youngsters on the bench. As it looks, yes, we do have some youngsters in here who could be important moving forward. We will obviously be using our development plans to the best of our abilities. Now, obviously... From season one on, the Youth Academy is going to be huge. For the first two to three seasons maximum, we're going to be using the Youth Academy a lot. Now, we're starting off in Ligue 2. That is the second division in France. Sadly, they haven't added the third one yet into France. Would be nice to have, just like the Germany one. But we will be going in and looking for a talent here. What do we have? Who is the big talent that we have? We have... 
76 rated. Where the hell did this come from? Hold on. Is this my homegrown talent because of uh, because of buying the ultimate? <laughs> Is that it? I think that might be it. I think I just basically used my um, ultimate edition of FIFA uh, for this. <laughs> for this ability. By the way, the scout. Four star experience, two star judgment. Okay, that's not too bad. But Samuel Sanchez, not necessarily the most french name <laughs> we have found him for our team and he goes straight into the starting lineup looks like we will have this man carry us throughout the entire career mode i did not expect this but this career mode just got even better welcome to the team buddy he looks absolutely outstanding 76 rated highest rated player by a mile 76 Okay, EA, I see you. So Sanchez has potential to be special. Obviously, one of the most insane players we have found already. Um, has incredible pace, incredible dribbling and passing as well already at the age of 17. Um, he has decent shooting as well. I guess he's a center attacking midfielder and I'm assuming he's going to be even higher rated. So it looks like we will have to play with a formation that has a center attacking midfielder in it. Real quick, though, I want to see who the youngest players are and how high, high rated they are. Again, once again, in one view. Jarvella is going to be a big one for us from Finland. Welcome, buddy. Um, is it Was his name Tor? No, it was Tero. Uh, we have Benye here as a striker. <coughs> Looks okay. This guy's probably not going to be usable at all. He's 19 years old. Uh, this guy's 18.53 rated. Okay, the goalkeeper could be all right. Uh, Boucher could be usable. And then this goalkeeper is definitely a better option for us. And then we already have a jump up to the age of 24. Now, I was also wondering, do we see any types of potential? Oh, by the way, oh God, this is going to cost my entire budget, isn't it? Ah, uh, this is a stupid thing, by the way. EA, yeah, you need to fix this. Every time you create a club, half your team is basically running out of their contracts. I don't like that at all. As we always do, we're going to put the old lads onto the transfer list because we're all about the wonder kids, right? And even the high rated ones with actual value in the transfer market. All of these guys are going to be put up. Sanchez will hopefully be able to deal with this squad as it stands. You know what? This guy I'm not going to put on there. Uh, 28 and below, I might just keep around. This one I kind of want to get rid of, even though he's 28 as well, just like this guy's. But he has a little bit more value, so maybe we can get a little bit more out of him. But other than that, when we look into value and we go down to age, we have Verdier here, who is at the club since, so no potential in him. We have Boucher here, who also doesn't have any potential. So basically, it looks like if you create a club like this and you put very young on, nothing necessarily changes with the potential, which is... I guess I was kind of hoping we would have a couple of players here with okay potential, but by the looks of things, that is not the situation. But then again, I have a one and a half star team that is the lowest rating in League 2. And I would assume maybe if you bump it up to like three and a half, four star teams, you would probably have better talents coming up. So just a heads up. Just for now, since we don't really necessarily have too much money, I was thinking about sending the scout away, but I do believe his judgment is a big issue because if you guys know, judgment brings you higher quality players that is the more important stat out of the two experience just gives you more talents really uh but as it stands with our own judge uh, with our own scout here it's not necessarily a perfect uh, opportunity for us to waste money on it so i'm just gonna wait on a couple of sales and possibly bring in a higher rated scout so here's the position change for sanchez and i think he might go up a lot here oh wait he didn't go up at all okay so I guess he was pretty fine at center mid. Oh, well, it is what it is. And with that sale, we have just let go a bunch of players. Let's jump right into the transfer history to inform you guys. Here you can see Evrard, the center back, has left for 3.6. Grenier is gone for 3 million. Nerveux for 450. Bernier has left on a loan deal. And that now leaves us with around 6 million to spend, but also a quite empty team that probably won't be able to compete in this league. And that's okay, because our first season, necessarily, it's not important for us to focus on winning things or anything like that. The most important thing is to find the right talents to move us forward. And to do that, we really need a goated scout. This one is 5 star, 5 star. I am going all in on this one. Luke, 
I know you're from Belgium, but as far as I know, a lot of people in Belgium can speak French, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, I'm sorry about that one. But let's go for Luca van der Felde. He is the scout for this team. Four million are going to be spent on him. I hope it's going to be the right decision here. Straight away, obviously, we're going to be sending him over to France. We're going to be looking for talents every three months. Uh, because that is normally a very effective method. So let's hope it works. This is the setup for our team now, boys. We have Guyon at striker, Sanchez in the camp, Boucher on the left, Marquez will become a right winger, Giraud and Torre in the center midfield position in the 4 2 3 1, not CDMs. Uh, we have Leger on the left, Martino and Jarvela at center back, and then Barbosa down the right with the young goalkeeper taking over now in goal. This is the team that is going to carry us forward from this point on. I do have some money, though. I can still spend around 2 million. Let's see. Jorginho Rutter from Hoffenheim, showing great potential. A French striker with a nice haircut and an actual picture as well. Only shows sprint speed and acceleration, though, but he's only 19, so... I'll give him a chance. If we can get him, that'd be great. 2.2 million. They still want 2.4. I'm going to offer 2.3 and hope it's going to work out here. It is working out. 2.3 million for Rota. That is basically our entire budget. We got to sell our own striker to get some money back into the team. Maybe at least like 1 million for the rest of the season. Absolutely love his haircut, by the way. Absolutely outstanding haircut. Going to be joining into our team as a striker. Look at that. Blonde will stand out a lot on the pitch. He comes in at a 67 rating, which is just below this man, who's 28. So this young man has a lot more potential moving forward. Decent pace, good shooting, good dribbling as well. Five-star weak foot. Okay. I see you. I see you, buddy. That's going to be huge. Guyon, 1.7 mil or 1.6 mil, whatever it is. He's going for a decent price. Our first ever scat report is bringing in a couple of players who might have high potential, but really low rating. Um, And that's not necessarily ideal. This guy, again, just like the other one, could have high potential. We don't know. Hopefully more to come next month. I can tell you one thing, though. We are struggling a lot in the league immediately. Um, I can show you guys here in the league table. We are currently actually not that much. We're 12. I mean, look, I'm not expecting to do wonders. My manager rating is at a 95. I don't want to necessarily get promotion or anything like that. But it's nice to see that this team is capable of getting some results. Second time around. Look at that. 975,000 in value. Only 15 years old, though. He's a central player. Could be a center back, CDM, center mid. I'm not too sure, but no matter what he is, he comes he comes straight into our team. That's for sure. Uh, this one, 375. I'll sign anyone that has like pretty high potential, I guess. Uh, goalkeeper would have to be higher rated though. 525. Okay, so this scout is actually really, really good. All right, boys. We got a really good one here. Let's go. After looking at all the talents, you can see right here, Belcour is the one. 15 years old, 61 rated, CDM. Uh, we got to work on this kid. And I am also working on the rest, even on this guy, who is a centimeter, but could be a better striker. Who knows? And has high potential. So that's why I'm trying. Oh, mate. <laughs> this scout is golden. 800k. Mate, I, I, I love this guy. I love this guy. He costs us a lot of money, a lot of money, but he's already brought back two players that are worth more than 800,000. So that already nicely makes up for uh, how much he costs us because we can definitely sell these guys on for huge amounts later on. Gerard into striker goes up by plus 10. I felt it. I knew it. And now he actually looks like, like a viable player for us, boys. He has really high potential. There you go. From 47 to 57, and all of a sudden, he looks like one of the good ones. And then the other one that we just signed, 57 rated. Good dribbling on him. Uh, decent passing as well. Okay pace. I would say this guy's definitely a cam rather than a center mid. Yeah, this scout is confirmed to be the GOAT, man. I've just sent him away for another month, and he's just continuously finding some uh, very, very good talents for us here. Um, most of them with really high potential. Some of them with really high overalls immediately as well which is quite useful. But um, now we're going to be going into January. And I can tell you guys how this first half of the season has gone. The French lads are doing well. Les Bleus are holding themselves quite well in the mid-table mix-up. Uh, in the lower, lower half of the mid-table, I would say. But 
it's okay that we didn't expect as much as this even i am very happy with the fact that our team is able to do well and it's get it gets me a nice overall rating as a coach as well seems like we have completed most of our objectives 98 manager rating and let's take a look at the squad now who's scoring them goals it's giro it's torre it's boucher rutter only played 19 games two goals two assists that is a bit underwhelming considering that he should be absolutely ruining everyone so i don't quite understand what's going on there uh that is a bit of an l but when we look at the appearances i guess he only missed three games maybe he was injured for a couple i'm not too sure anyways in terms of the overall we're looking at sanchez with the 78 now he's doing well barbosa doing very well for himself on that right back position growing plus three um Giro going up by plus two torre is doing well in that center midfield position teams want to sign them as we can see here approached by neem olympique let's see what do they offer for him they offer a swap deal plus one million and they want to give us Mahamadu Dukore. I am not necessarily interested in letting Torre go. Uh, the centre-back Martino has gone up. Uh, Rata has gone up a little bit. Or Ruter. I don't know how you pronounce the name. It's French. Um, I'm sorry. I can't speak French anymore. Uh, Leger here is coming in with the plus two. Boucher plus four. Massive growth for him. Only plus one for our goalkeeper. Jarvella doing all right. Uh, Marquez just changed position. But that's pretty much it for him. And now in the league table, as I mentioned, I'm pretty satisfied with how things are going for season one. It's exactly going as planned. Currently 13th, even better than I had planned. As long as we're not down there at the bottom, I'm fine with it. I don't expect to get promotion this season. It's all about the Youth Academy and finding the right players to get us to Liga at some point. Not immediately. Oh, Francois goes up by plus four as a cam. Looking at the potential of some of these players, I am feeling like that we might have to sign them in and loan them out immediately. For example, someone like Gerard needs to come in into our squad and be loaned out. Otherwise, he might lose his potential. He's already 17, so we don't want to lose out on that. Uh, this Corbet guy doesn't really impress me too much, so I might promote him and sell him. So that's another way of making money, obviously. Uh, but the rest of these are still quite young. Granier is looking okay. Mikola is looking okay. I guess we can get both of these guys onto the bench of our main team. And Francois has to come in as well. So all the players that are 17 are going to be coming in into the squad now. <laughs> yes. Rafael Leroy. Oh, mate. Ah, this is, this is going to be an insane career mode, honestly. We're just finding all the players, preparing ourselves for a massive run later on. Leroy comes in at the 62 rating. He's 16 years old as well. I am going to be promoting him and I just wonder, do we put him straight into the starting lineup? Dieme is like 24 years old. Oh no, Dieme is 19. Ooh, there's a little battle coming up in between the two. All right, whoever grows more faster is going to be in that goalkeeper position. For now, it's Dieme. Come on, look at that. Joseph Daniel, 2.7 million this scout i hope he's a winger i really hope he's a right midfielder that would be perfect for our team that would genuinely be the best player to get for us and we get another one here who looks all right but no potential in him and uh, this guy's potential but no rating i am looking for the perfect mix at this point 500k hmm you know what i'll sign him up why not i don't know why some of them i say no to and why some of them i say yes to it doesn't make any sense i know well he's not a right winger but he does have good pace, good shooting, good passing, and amazing dribbling. Now, again, as I mentioned before, ideally, I would like to have him as a right midfielder or a right winger. It only takes him two weeks. Maybe it can work because he would be the perfect replacement for Marquez, who is in that right wing position and doesn't necessarily belong there. So I'd happily take him in and put him straight into the starting lineup. As if we didn't find an amazing goalkeeper yet. Another one joins the list. Daniel becomes a 68 rated right winger. As expected, this man is destined for the starting lineup. So let's get Daniel into our team. Let's promote him immediately. And Marquez, I'm sorry, buddy, but it's time for you to drop out from the starting lineup. It's time for this young man to take over immediately. Here he goes. And he will, of course, be a right winger for our team. 
That way, we're already looking much better. The season ends with a victory and a loss, which pretty much sums up everything about this season, really. We have found amazing talents, but we have taken a lot of L's, as you can see. But as I said at the beginning, we didn't expect to be here and we're in the 10th position at the end of season one. I'm actually quite impressed with that because there's a lot of teams with like a three star rating in this league. And we started off with one and a half, which was the lowest at the time in this league. The team that I replaced was a one and a half star team. And we probably started off with the lowest budget out of all of them as well, with just one mil. And look at us now. Look at where we are now. We got Rutter up top with the 71, Sanchez 79, Daniel 70 on the right hand side from the Youth Academy. Giro has been here, is in that 72 rating, uh, just like Torre. Leger has grown nicely. Martino and Jarvella are uh, defending for us. And Dieme is soon to be pushed out of the starting lineup by Leroy if he doesn't grow, which he hasn't done this season a lot. Uh, Barbosa has grown massively, though. So huge congratulations to him for his performances. And at the end of the day, let's see if Rutter has turned his season around. Eight goals and two assists. It's not necessarily great. I got to tell you, 6.6 .6 rating on average. Plus four though this season, which is good. But he needs to do a little bit more for us to get him to insane ratings. Otherwise, we might have to look into someone else later on. Boucher has done well though. 10 in one here, only 20 years old. And Torre outstanding performances by him just like Giro with the seven and seven and then in terms of assists we got Sanchez with the six but only three goals you would expect a little bit more from one of the central and key players in our team he is 79 rated but he hasn't done as much only a 6.2 rating that's probably not going to be too good for him in the dynamic potential department but we'll see how that goes it's just season one and I've got to say, I'm proud of my team. Let's see how season two can go for us. The new season begins with 2.5 million. And on top of it, what do we have here? What do we have? Budget, 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 6.5. That's actually not too bad, you know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that budget. And I think we might have a scout report as we go into the season. No, we don't. All good. Uh, we have kept our job, obviously. And this season, we have an 80 rated Sanchez in our team. Now, I want to know. How's potential looking on some of these players? So Sanchez has kept his potential to be special. That is great to see. Uh, Barbosa, his contract is expiring soon. Can't negotiate. Cool. We'll do that later on. Giro, it's the same. Uh, Torre, no potential. Rutter, still great potential. That's good. Uh, any of the youngsters. Daniel, showing great potential. 70 rated already. With a good season, he could become an exciting prospect. Who knows? We're still in Ligue 2, so it is possible. Um, Boucher, one of the youngsters, not showing anything, sadly. Francois, still out on loan on Sivas Sport. Uh, Dieme, the goalkeeper, is now 65 rated. So, yeah, we got to watch out for that one. Uh, Leroy is chasing him with the 64 rating. Exciting prospect than Gerard. This is the guy that started off with a 47 rating. So, I'm very excited about this one. I'm going to add him to the loan list because he might not get enough playtime in our team. Um, and other than that, though, we are looking quite solid. Just got to extend some contracts. We'll be good. Going into our youth academy, we are realizing that a lot of these talents, or most of them, sadly, have lost their potential, which is a big L. Um, I was kind of hoping they would keep it. Belcour is still looking very, very good, though. Especially as a center back, he could actually be very good. So uh, we're going to be promoting him. He is now 16. He comes in. Jorbert is going to take a little bit more time for him. And we have Satan the Solution. As a left back, he goes up by plus two. So take a look at this as we go to left back, plus two. Same rating as Leger, who is disposable. Let's put it that way. There is one player that I want to bring in in exchange for a specific player that we already have in the team. His name is Kone. His, his name starts off with K and ends with K here, or it's KK basically. But Quadio Manu Kone from Borussia Mönchengladbach, a great midfielder. If we can get him into our squad, that would be a massive, massive boost to our squad. And uh, I want him now, immediately. So, let's try it. We're going to go for the midfielder. We're going to offer them Juro, who had a good season, obviously. And possibly up to 2 million with a sell-on clause. I know that's a lot, but this guy's worth a lot. And they probably want a lot more than that. Yeah, they want 5 mil. So, they basically want our entire budget. Um... I will give you 3.9. How about that? Are you interested in that? 5.3. Okay, so they're very adamant about this price tag. 
So I guess 4.8 might get them a little bit closer, maybe. 4.9. It's a lot of money, but we will let Jiro go. And with that, we should get 2 billion back. What the hell is going on with these guys' eyelashes, by the way? That is very, very odd looking. But I guess we'll go for it. Orange? Orange at the bottom of your shoe? All right, man, I'm done with this scene. Kone comes in with a 72 rating, showing great potential. And he moves straight into the starting lineup to play alongside Torre, who's still somewhat younger compared to Jiro. Uh, and Jiro will be leaving our team for hopefully around 2.5 million. Ideally, that is the price tag that I'm looking for. But when we look at the bench here, we have a couple of players that can definitely be put in there at the moment. Uh, I'm seeing some 60 plus rated players. Belcour obviously now being trained to become a left back. And as soon as he does, he takes over right there. There's the offer we've been waiting for. And Celtic is the team interested in him. 2.3 million for the 29-year-old. We'll just have to accept it and move on. We still have around 4 million to spend. And obviously, your boy does want to spend it. Now, the question is, what position is the position to spend it on? I'm thinking centre-back. Maybe we actually, no, Jarvella is 18 years old. Oof. Uh, maybe we replace him? Or do we go for a new left wing? It's either left wing or centre-back. I'm just not too sure on what I want to do right now. There might be a player that I could get into the team. It's not necessarily the biggest of talents, but Castella Lukeba is someone that I want to bring into the squad if possible. He's going to cost us a little bit, but not too much, hopefully. We're going to offer them Martino plus one mil. Is that something you would be interested in? They just want 2.5 mil straight away. That is not a bad amount for this young man who possibly is worth that money. 2.2? The deal is done. Lukeba comes in at the value of 2.7 million. So this was a greatly valued transfer for us, which means that Martino will be put onto the transfer market and Lukeba takes over immediately. And Balcour should hopefully soon be a left back. I've, I've still been waiting, boys. It's taken a little bit longer than expected. But this man has good pace, good defending and good physicality. Left footed as well. Perfectly fitted for the left center back position. Halfway through this season, guys, in 2023, we are now looking at a much better team, in my opinion. Rutter with the 74, Sanchez 82, Boucher is still struggling to get to that 70. Daniel is growing nicely, Del Barbosa is looking all right. Jarvela might, might just get to the 70 this year. Who knows? Uh, Lukeba with that 70 now. And the goalkeepers, the youngsters, are taking over. Leroy now in the goal for us as Dieme has been dropped. And uh, Belcourt still trying to become a fullback. And I've been trying for a very long time. For some reason, he just won't change position, guys. And maybe now it's time for him to do so, finally. It only took me 80,000 years to make it happen. Now we're going to train him to become a right back. And he will take over in a starting lineup as it was supposed to happen a long long time ago but i guess now is the right time for it to happen he's an exciting prospect as well so i need him to get as much play time as possible hopefully now with a lot more matches played his match sharpness will go up and he will do better for the team now let's move into the individual stats let's see if our striker is scoring them goals no he isn't boucher is scoring them goals 7.2 average rating ggs Rutter with the plus two and the 10 goals and one assist. Not too bad, actually. Still good. It's just that our left wing is outperforming him. Torre is having a great season once again. Kone has come in with two goals. And we see 12 assists on Sanchez. Sanchez. That's what I wanted to see from him. Very nicely done, pal. I really, really love the amount of work he has put in here in this season. Because last season, I was unimpressed considering he was our best player. We still have two million to spend but I don't feel like spending it. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going at the moment. Um, Can I just present to you Victor Comb? 2.4 million, 81 to 94 potential, center midfielder. Don't mind if I do. I mean, the scouting system has been a blessing this time around. Uh, the last sprint to glory, we didn't get this lucky. 850k, another goalkeeper though, so that's an L. But we are finding some absolutely stunning talents here. Hopefully, a lot of these guys will be still in our team towards the end of this. Another 1 million player. That is nice. I'll take that on board. Let's check them out in the Youth Academy. Let me show you guys what we have going on in the Youth Academy halfway through the season now. Uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Let's go into the Youth Academy, please. Here we go. So, what do we have here? We have a 66-rated goalkeeper. We have Com who comes in with the center midfield position, 80, uh, a 64 rated, 81 to 94 potential. Could he play a different position possibly? 
He does have some decent shooting. He has good dribbling, decent pace, terrible defending. Definitely has to be a center attacking midfielder in my eyes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, change him to a center attacking midfielder. And that way he should possibly go up in his stats a little bit more. He's 18 already. So we probably have to promote him instantly without him ha really um, spending some time in the youth academy. Otherwise, he might complain immediately. Um, and then we have a decent goalkeeper coming in with the 63 rating. Too many goalkeepers for my liking, but I can sell them all later on. And Jamey comes in at a 61 rating. Has good pace, good passing. Really, really good passing. Uh, decent dribbling. Okay, physicality. I think I'm going to keep him at center mid. I'm already having too many center attacking midfielders. Oh, by the way, I completely forgot to show you guys the league table halfway through here. We are in that fourth position. One and two get to direct promotion into Liga. I want to get in there if possible, but it seems a bit far away at this stage. We have one game in hand, but maybe playoffs might have to be the way for us to get into Liga. This season has come to an end, and lads, we're here in the cup. What? What are we doing in the cup? Don't tell me we're actually in like the French Cup final. Oh, it's promotion playoffs. Okay, so we didn't make it into the top two. Toulouse is our opponent. They are actually pretty good. Ah, uh, okay. 65 points. Way behind Dijon. Nine points behind them. And way, way behind Amiens, who have run through the league right now. Is there a chance for us to get promotion this season? Or is it too early still? I mean, the team is looking good. Everyone is above the 70 rating now. Even Belcour has gone up ever since he has joined in the starting lineup. Uh, and then in terms of goals, we are still looking at Boucher with the 14, Tori with the 13, Rutta with the 13. This reminds me of all those times I had one of these young strikers where they don't perform. And in the season after, all of a sudden they score 30 goals. So let's 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 hold on to that one for a second. Daniel's doing all right. Sanchez with an incredible season with 15 assists, but only a 6.6 .6 rating, which is a bit disappointing to see. Uh, but overall, a good season for our team with a lot of youngsters coming through the Youth Academy as well. You, you can look at all these names here. Most of these guys have come through the Youth Academy and they are looking good, don't they? A lot of them have really high potential. And uh, sadly, I didn't find time to loan them out yet. So next season, whoever still has potential will be loaned out and who doesn't will be sold. So that way we're going to make some extra cash for our team. Now, Toulouse, are we here to lose or are we here to win? Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. It is going to be a 4-3 victory on penalties. Boucher gets us through. Okay. Now, I think there's another stage, isn't there? I think there's another match. Yes. We are up against Troy. Okay, Troy, please let me win. Please let me win. I want to get into Liga. I want to get that extra cash. They're playing with five at the back. That's going to be an issue. That is going to be a big issue. Here it goes. What's it going to be? Le Bleu have won. Jorginho scores and Daniel scores as well. We are going through into Liga, no? I think that's it, right? I'm pretty sure that's it. Liga, here we come, question mark. No, there's a final. Oh no, it's met. Okay, um, is that a team that is in League A? Let me just quickly see. So is it like we play twice against League Derp teams and then at the end, we end up playing against... Yeah, okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. All right. Liga, are we ready for it or not? This will show it. It's the game against Mets twice which is interesting. So it's a long run to get into Liga through the playoffs. But I guess here goes our try. Quick sim in it. What's it going to be looking like? Sanchez ain't here. It's a 1-1 draw. Sanchez was not allowed to play this game. Our highest rated player wasn't here. And we got a 1-1 draw. And then to finish it off, to end the season two, we are here to play against Mets. This time, hopefully with our beloved Sanchez. Yes, he is back. His addition to this squad should be getting us the dub. Right? Right? Oh! Oh! Oh, man. It's going to be season three in Ligue 2. We bottled it. Absolutely bottled it. Oh, well. It is what it is. We got to live with that and we got to move on. At least it gives us some time to get these boys really high up in their rating get them an amazing season with a dynamic potential kicking in 
and then get even more money through the sales of the Youth Academy players and make the right choices. It is what it is. It has been a tough road for Le Bleu. First season was awful. Second season, we got there, but didn't make it. 5.3 million, which could be a huge boost to our new season. And the budget is looking like this. 11 mil. I can definitely do some business with that. That is class. Now, it comes down to finding the young players and letting those ones go that don't have potential in them. Obviously, we have way too many goalkeepers right now. So this man is going to be leaving our team. Um, this guy is going to be leaving our team. He's 18. He's going to be transfer listed. Dieme has been here for quite some time. He's going to be transfer listed. I guess I'm going to keep him though. So Dieme and also Roger can go. Uh, Leroy is... Oh, Leroy is there as well. He's the 70 rated one. Well, I guess uh, all of you lads can basically go. You can go as well. We're going to keep Jobert and we're going to keep Leroy in the squad. That way we have the highest rated goalkeeper still here. Exciting prospect as well. So that's good. Uh, Bill Coors sadly lost uh, his potential, but he's still higher rated. Uh, so we're going to keep him around. Uh, this man is 26 years old. He needs to go onto the transfer list. And then we're going to go through the list of the players. I'm going to make sure that the ones with potential will stick around. As I said before, potential to be special on Sanchez. That's very nice to see. Very, very nice. Francois is growing nicely away from our home, by the way. 72 rated right now. And then we're looking at Daniel showing great potential. Gerard, contract expiring soon. Let's fix that real quick. He did have huge potential before he left. He does have great potential still. That's okay. And then Rutter, still with the great potential. Okay, now it's decision time. Well, here is a life-changing deal offer coming in from PSG. Sanchez is worth 116 million. They're offering 68 mil plus Serginho Dest. I'm going to negotiate with PSG, the team that is at the top of the food chain in France. And we're going to try and extract as much money out of them as we can to basically do an entire, entire rebuild of our team, which we basically earned at this point. And we are in season three, so it's possibly time to do this. Let's go ahead and ask for 160 million. Is that something that PSG would be willing to pay for Samuel Sanchez? 160 million that is a complete rebuild of the entire squad about to happen this deal is life-changing wow okay now i'm excited i am very excited i can't wait to sign all these beasts into the squad let's go 146 million added to the budget and it doesn't even impact the team that much you know i know sanchez has been quality but mate this is this is gonna be a different year of football this time around i'm telling you that much we're destroying league two and i'm gonna make sure we do so starting off with the center attack in midfield position we are going straight after Mikhail Olise or Michael Olise or Michael Olise, whatever you want to call him. We're going to go after him. He is a very talented player that has just joined Crystal Palace in real life and starts off at around 7 million. All right. 7 million is what he starts off at, but they have a 76 million release clause for him, which kind of already tells you what this boy might be worth. Uh, we're going to go for a transfer offer of 25 million with a little bit of a sell on clause. And that would be a good usage of our budget. Patrick Vieira wants 38. Okay, so we are negotiating. I like it. Let's go down to 32.5, Patrick. How are we feeling about this? Crystal Palace, are you willing to let go of this man? 34. All right, one last offer. 33.5. Come on, Patrick. Come on, Patrick. Let's go. Olise is joining us straight after that i want to go for mohamed siwakan to come in and to that center back position which is needed we need a strong defense and siwakan is going to be the addition to that 32.5 million for siwakan right after olise or olis i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing his name wrong boys uh we're going after siwakan here 32.5 what an addition addition to the squad he will be instead of cherki we're going to go after kamaldin sulemana left wing from stadrene i think he just got the silver stars and ultimate team as well has really really good stats on him and decent potential let's try and see if we can get him 23.4 26.5 how about 24.5 is that a deal you want and it is 
Suleimana joins us to replace Boucher. After all those signings, we still have 54 million left to spend, but I think it's time to show you guys the stats of the new lads. We're bringing in Suleimana, 78. Olis coming in with the 78 as well. And then Simakan coming in with the 79, massively upgrading our defense. And that way, we're already looking much better. I think the next signing that we're going to bring in with the rest of the money, or maybe the next two signings even, have to be defenders as well. And maybe even a goalkeeper. I'm not too sure because 71 is a bit low. It needs to be much higher than that. I'm going to be looking out for a goalkeeper immediately. The lad we're going for is actually Turkish, but also plays at Stadrene. He starts off at a 68 rating. So I'm wondering, uh, he starts off at 2.4 million value. I would say 10 mil should be fair, right? Should be a fair offer here. Are they interested in that? They want 17. So it shows me that this guy's definitely looking very, very good in his stats. And that would be a good upgrade for our team. 14.8 million. Don Alemdar is coming into the team. He comes in at a 76 rating with a value of 9 million only, I guess we'd have to say, considering how much we paid for him. But still, it is a big upgrade for our defense, of course. Now I'm looking at either the left back or the centre back position. Lukeba, as we know, did have some decent stats to go with, but I don't think he had high potential. Yeah, he only had 80 potential, which is still good enough. Belcour was supposed to be a big lad for our team, but sadly, he kind of lost his exciting prospect status, didn't he? And he doesn't even show great potential anymore. So it's between Lukeba and Belcour. Lukeba is a real player. Belcour is a generated one for us. So we're going to go and replace him. The last player I'm going for is Adrian or Adrian or Adrian Truffer. <laughs> Man, these names. Um, here we go. 34 million for him. A left back that is high, high quality. Again, another player from Stade René, by the way. Um, they seem to have a lot of really, really good players here. And we're going to be able to get him. 36 mil and that is our entire budget spent i definitely need to sell some players still to be able to negotiate contracts 79 rated 21.5 million in value it's very interesting that we have to pay so much more than their value at these uh, at this point in our career mode but that is the upgrade that we wanted boys 79 79 76 78 78 here we go. Now, things are about to be very interesting with dynamic potential kicking in. These guys could go up in their rating so much after an insane season in League 2. We could be looking at a bunch of 80 plus rated players here. And that's all I want. Well, this is an ideal. Um, someone's about to take away our striker for his release clause. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no. All right. Well, Rata is going to leave for a very low amount. And that is just doing my head in right now. He's 76 rated. What is his value? What is his value? What is his value? He's 17 million. 23 million is his release clause. Oh, God. I can't extend his contract. I just extended it. So we just got to hope that this deal doesn't go through. Well, he has been sold. And we got 17 million left with 20 million in the transfer budget. Oh, God. Good luck to me. Uh, I need to figure this out. This is this is a bad, bad thing that just happened. We have Gerard, who is very talented. Don't get me wrong. I think he's, I think he's an exciting prospect, is he? Let me see real quick. Gerard, are you an exciting prospect still? No, just showing great potential. If I can find someone, I'll go for him. But if I don't, we get, I guess we got to go with him. He's the guy who started off at 47, by the way. We have found the perfect option. It's the last player that we can genuinely go after here. Enteka is a striker playing for Rayo Vallecano, 25 years old, and he does have some potential on him. Uh, they want 25 million for him. I'm trying to bring this price down because I can't necessarily afford this. 24 mil. There we go. Whew. All right, man. I'm going to have some massive issues with wages this season. I can tell you already. 21 million he's worth comes in at a 77 rating. Now, I don't necessarily think he has less potential than Rutter, which is a good thing. And we also got to keep Gerard around as a backup. That way, I think we're set up for a good season here, boys. 81 pace, good shooting, good passing, good dribbling, really good physicality, left-footed. Looking very good. Development plans on the new boys. And let's get to January. This is the last player that we're going to be bringing up from the Youth Academy into the main squad. From this point on, we're not going to be looking for any more talents. But this guy is looking very, very solid, so... I'm glad that we have him in our squad. 
And in January, the ones with potential still, if we do have any remaining in the squad, we're going to be put them out, uh, putting them out on loan. Uh, one thing I should probably show you guys is who we have sold in this period. We have let go of a lot of players. You can see a bunch of transfers happening. Obviously, Sanchez leaving for 160. After that, 36 million for Traffer. Um, 34 million it ended up being for Simakan. 33.5 for Elise. Suleimana, 24.5. 24 for Enteca. Rata is left for 23. Alemdar is coming for 14.8. And then the rest is just a bunch of low rated players being sold to bring in some extra funds and a loan for a talented player. Well, would you look at that? Halfway through the season, Le Bleu at the top. Am I surprised? Not really. This is what I expected after that massive transfer of Sanchez. This team is exactly where I wanted them to be. Enteca 80, Suleimana 80, Olisa 80, Daniel 81, our Youth Academy B, Simakan up to the 80 as well. Uh, Truffer up to the 81, Alemdar 77. These boys are having the time of their life in this league, I can tell you that much. And Enteca, yes, he's a beast. 7.8 rating. I mean, he's 26 now. He was 23 when the game started. But still, very happy with this. Uh, Daniel's doing well, Suleimana is doing well, Torre has always been performing, but obviously he's going to be one of the next players that we definitely will be replacing in our team. But generally speaking, for half a season, this is some insane growth. And even Combe here, he could replace Torre down the line. He's a talented player, by the way, from the Youth Academy. And Francois is looking good as well out alone. The boys are doing a great job. I'm, I'm very happy with how things are going here, boys. This is definitely going to be the season in which we go up into the league uh, and i'm all ready for it i'm not even kidding you my schedule has been so mad that i'm recording this now a week after we finished the sprint to glory uh, recording last time around <laughs> i looked at all the footage and everything to get caught up again and i'm again once again super excited to jump back in here as we are looking at a very 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 good team that are gonna destroy a league two. so uh let's get it on let's continue to grind lads it is a week later, but my motivation levels have not gone down. If anything, they have gone up. So I want to make this team the best. Let's get it. The season approaches its end. Season three coming into an end. And lads, look at that. We're up against PSG in the cup. Is that actually happening? No. No, we did not just beat PSG. <laughs> There's no way. Oh my God, we actually did. Okay, so this is a bit mental. I can't believe what I've just seen. We were not supposed to be this good at this stage. We might just go ahead and win the cup. If we do that, we get European football, right? No way. Wait, they, they, they didn't take us serious. Surely, surely there's absolutely no way that we as a League 2 league two team have just won, won the Coupe Nationale. Wow. Let's go, baby. What a comeback to the recording session of the Sprint to Glory France, man. Absolutely incredible. We have just beaten PSG and Lille. Enteca 82, Olise 82, Suleimana 83. Daniel is looking good. Barbosa is a bit low rated, same as Lukeba. We're going to have to see what we do with those guys. Trifford on the left back position is looking very solid. Torre, we're going to have to look into as well. He's now 27 years old. And the bench and everything else is looking just about fine. Francois with the 75. Not even on the bench. That is a mistake. Let's bring that man into the team right now. But generally speaking, an absolutely incredible season that we have just seen right here. I want to take a look into the specifics of the players' performances. Who has carried us? Enteca, clearly. Plus five this year with 34 goals, seven assists. I don't think I've ever seen any player get an 8.2 on average in any of my sprint to glory so far. This is ridiculous. 8.2. Are you kidding? Daniel as well. Looking very good here. Suleimana with the 7.0. Boucher with the 6.8. Good season. Francois. Kone from midfield has done well. 5.9. Uh, uh, 5 and 9. <laughs> he has in this season. Olisa has the 5 and 6. So generally speaking, a good season, which hopefully will catapult a lot of players to higher potentials in the next year. And we have, yes, gotten promotion as it was expected this season we have only one loss on the record and we have beaten psg and lille now we're coming up into league uh 
Let's see what kind of chaos we can cause. I think we're qualified for the Europa League. I'm not even joking. I think that just happened. 7.8 million going into league. Uh, what's the budget? Show me the budget. That's the only thing I care about. 26 million. Come on, man. We're going to play in Europa League. What the hell? Anyways, let's take a look at the important things. Youth development is very high. So just to keep my job, I might have to still send the scout out here to look for defenders and to look for players that have really high potential. Well, that's going to be interesting. Uh, continental success. Yes, we are part of the Europa League. I don't even know what to say right now. This is just madness. I think there's one clear position that we have to work on, and it is Barbosa. He is 29 years old. I think that's the one that we got to put onto the transfer list and uh, make a change. Unless I want to go ahead with the youngster here, but he doesn't show any potential anymore. I can turn him into a right back while Barbosa is gone and uh, use him there. But you can see it takes him 23 weeks to become a better player. We can even change his position immediately, it says there. But I'm not interested in that. Lukeba still showing great potential. So we got to show some faith in him. Torre and Barbosa are the two that I'm looking at for replacements this year. Here goes nothing. I'm going to go after Kalulu. You guys know him. A lot of people have gotten to know him since last year. He's currently playing at Deportivo Alaves, usually at AC Milan. This French right back could be the ideal solution for us. Well, they want a very high amount for him. They want Barbosa plus 17.5. That's nearly our entire budget. It's a lot of money, guys, but I feel like it's just the right move to make, so... Oh, wow. They're not even going down with the price. 15.5. I don't necessarily want to pay exactly what they want. That's not... Wow. Okay. Uh, how about 16.5? Are you guys willing to negotiate or am I just talking to myself here? There we go. We got it. Kalulu joins. He comes in at a 77. That's perfect. It's just one rating above. I mean, obviously, it's not perfect, but you know what I mean here. Uh, Belcour can be a backup. Kalulu comes in into that right back spot. Where the hell is he? Here he is. So he comes in and we'll train him to become a left back. That will make him grow much faster for sure. I wish there was a way to go straight into the development plans from this screen as well. I think that's something that EA definitely needs to add, by the way. But here we go into his development plan. Let's check out the young man. How long does it take him to grow into the next rating? I think he has normally 82 potential. So 17 weeks on okay form. That's not too bad. So here we go. Left back. And he should grow very quickly this season. Hopefully above 80 by the end. I hope. While we do bring in players, we also got to so let some go. Especially Francois, who still has potential on him. I need to let him go to Real Sociedad, which is qu a quality team, actually. Let's see how he does over there. Well, not surprised, guys. Not surprised. 40 points on us. It is the third position right now. And we are looking incredible. We are looking to qualify for Champions League football. Currently, obviously, in the Europa League which is a massive, massive achievement. I want to know how far we have gotten there in the Europa League. Are we still in it or are we out of it? I think we might be out, you know. Oh, no, we are still in it. Where are we? Where the hell is my team? Oh, that's the... Oh, these are the ones. Okay, sorry. That's the preliminary round. Group stages, 15 points. GG's all around. That was a bit confusing. Anyways, how are the lads doing? Now, I am seeing lots of growth, but I am seeing a couple stagnates as well. Daniel, plus three, exciting prospect, big dub. Simakan looking very good as a 24-year-old. Olis looking very nice. Uh, and Tekka has gone up nicely because of his insane performances last season. Suleimana, only a plus one, but he's still 22, so I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Truffer has not gone up. Uh, Kone is very unhappy with his contract. I tried to fix it, but it hasn't really happened yet. But he has grown nicely. Alamdar with the plus one. Kalulu plus three. As expected, I wanted him to get at least to the 80 rating. And he has done exactly that. Francois plus three out on loan. Looking solid. Gerard doing the same with the plus three. Belcour with the plus one. Lukeba only a plus one here. So it looks like... We might have to spend big next season at center back and center mid because Torre has left and uh, now Com is playing in that position. And generally speaking, it's not looking too good on the bench and the reserves. The players are very low rated. The backup players are not looking good at all. But generally, I'm very happy now. I'm thinking um, next season, I should probably look into free agents and stuff, man. I haven't looked into free agents at all. I forgot that that is a thing. So I will be looking to, into free agents. Actually, I can do it right now. Let's see if we can find any French good ones. Well, there wasn't necessarily anything amazing, but there was one player that I'm looking at and I'm going to scout him. 23-year-old right here, uh, Mwefek, a center midfielder who is also a right back. 
could be a good choice for us. I'll keep an eye on him. Well, he is 23. He has a 76 rating. And with that, he would be eligible for the starting lineup. I think that's a that's a buy, boys. Well, the season is over and uh, somehow we nearly made it into the UEFA or Europa League finals. We lost it against Chelsea. It might have been a little bit too early. I'm still happy, though. And we got Champions League football. It is secured, guys. It is absolutely secured. 70 points on us. PSG on 87. I mean, we're already in a league of its own right now we're up there against possibly one of the strongest teams in fifa 22 with the likes of messi neymar and mbappe i wonder if he's still playing or not only six losses this season and now let's take a look into our squad i am seeing a couple of people obviously struggling to keep up with the rest but daniel is doing really well and tech us once again absolutely incredible season from him but we got to look at the ones that don't grow that much. We got to look at him. How's he looking? 6.5. Not that great. Probably can go up to an 85 if you get lucky um, next season. Kone has gotten a new contract. Now he's happy. Alem that is at the 81. I'm not too satisfied with that. I'm going to look into that a little bit later on as well. Kalulu has been stuck on that 80. Uh, Francois and Gerard both have grown extremely well away from home. So that is beautiful. The new signing is on the 77. Lukeba is on the 77 as well. Come with the plus five, doing really well, uh, showing great potential. Who has scored the goals? 23 and six from Daniel. A bit surprising to see that. And Tekka with 29 goal contributions only this season. 7.1 on average, 7.1 there. So those guys are definitely going to go up. And the youngster, the Frenchman that I was supposed to replace with Muefek here has done really well. 15 and 4, 6.8 rating. That's good. 6.8 for Suleimana as well. Hopefully he can get to that 87 next year. Same goes for this man right here. All right, maybe, just maybe, this team is good enough already. But Champions League football, that requires a higher rated center mid and also a higher rated left center back for sure. Otherwise, we'll not have a chance and possibly a new goalkeeper somewhere down the line. The rest of the team, I'm okay with right now. Kalulu just came in. We'll have to see how he does next season in terms of growth. But for now, I am focused on left center mid, left center back. Great season overall. 10 million preseason tournament. That's about 3 mil more than last time, I believe. Now, here it goes. What are we looking at as the budget? 64 mil. Okay, we can definitely make some moves with that one. Now I'm interested to see which of these players is not growing According to who doesn't grow at all, we're going to go ahead and make a signing. Alemdar has just gone up to an 82, so he's already showing signs of wanting to stick around. As we speak, we are getting a little bit lucky. Two of the players that I'm interested in, I mean, currently I'm interested in Nianzu, Ndika, Genduzi, and Chuameni. Chuameni right now, his contract is running out. He's worth 59.5. If we can get him below 60, that's a huge steal. Oh, there we go. I offered 50, they came back with 61. I think we can definitely get this guy under the 60 million mark if possible. I guess we'll have to go up towards the 59 mil, which is his worth. Is that going to be something? 59.6. Chouameni. Welcome to the team, lads. Now, this season, our bench actually looks solid. Gerard, Francois, Moufek, uh, Com, Belcourt. We got some really, really good players there. Even Leroy. And then, obviously, we have Chouameni in that left center midfield position for us. Coming in with incredibly balanced stats. 75 pace, 75 shooting, 82 passing, 81 dribbling, 79 defending, 83 physicality. So... I am excited to have him in here. Six foot two tall. Good player. This man has a better weak foot. So let's move him across there and let's get it on. This season is about to turn very, very interesting. Lukeba has another chance to prove himself since we don't have any more money to spend. 40 million. One of our youngsters, Francois from the Youth Academy, has to leave us because we have no more money left and I need it for the wages. These boys are earning big bucks now. It's sad to see him go, but... That's just the nature of a sprint to glory. Let's try out Buddy Achille. I don't know if this is going to work out, but I'm going to offer whatever I have available to me. Obviously, going to include Lukeba into the deal as well. Are they interested? Oh, yes, they are. Okay, this is within our budget. Let's go. Um, 32.5 mil. Plus Lukeba, please, please, please. Ah, oh, man, negotiate, negotiate, Johnny. Come on, you can do better than this. 34 mil, okay. And you're going to have a higher sell-on clause. That's it. Come on, 35.3. Uh, I can do I can do with that. I can do with that. There we go. 
Big upgrade secured. Let's go. Well, this man definitely upgrades the team by plus five immediately. Badi Ashir comes in to play alongside Chuameni, both, I believe, from Monaco, actually, originally. And uh, now our team is looking very good. I'm happy with this. This team can definitely compete in the Champions League. Not necessarily win it, but they can compete. And that's what I'm looking for. I want more money for the team, more upgrades, high, high level performances and good average ratings to keep these guys pushing up towards the ratings where I want to see them. 87 is the bare minimum for me uh, to d basically see them as a success for the team. Fifth season, January. And guys, oh, we are leading the league. Uh, that is something that I absolutely love to see, of course. Now, I need to probably pay some attention to the Youth Academy objectives. So I'll see if I can do that. Anyways, most importantly, our team is doing really well. Enteca, 88 rated. Olis, 87. Suleimana and Daniel as well. And then we have Chuameni looking solid. Adi Ashile, I think, has grown by plus one. Or was he 84 already? Um, I might be mistaken here. Oh, no, he was an 82. He grew by plus two. Uh, Simakan looking good. Kalulu, a bit underwhelming, I'll have to admit. Uh, maybe at some point we might have to upgrade to someone like Mukiele for that right wing back position. Mukiele is obviously a massive talent. Uh, and even on the bench, Gerard has gone up to an 80. And uh, the boys are doing well. So overall, this team right here has gotten us into the first position in the league. I am very impressed with that. And I want to see how are we doing in the Champions League? We are not through into the next round, are we? Oh, wow. We got obliterated by Shakhtar Donetsk and Moscow. Huh. That's a shock. Well, we're going to have to focus on the league. Champions League, as I said before, would not be easy with this team. But I am surprised that we're out that early with this squad specifically. I think maybe next season, right back, goalkeeper, upgrades. It looks like it. Well, guys, we're approaching the end of the season. And it seems like we might be in the semifinals of the cup again against PSG. First time we played against them, it was a draw. Here we win in the penalties. And I think that puts us into the final of the cup again against Lille. Is this going to be a repeat of what happened last time? And I do wonder, are we out there winning the league again? Oh, not again, but are we are we going to be winning the league? Yes, it could be a double. It could be a double. No Champions League. Oh, no way, man. It's so freaking close. Look at that one point. That loss against Monaco held us back from winning the league title. It is what it is. I am a bit disappointed, to be completely honest with you. I thought we might be able to get it done. But, well, there's another season to come. And I am very confident moving forward because all the lads at PSG are getting very, very old. And our team is just getting better and better. And Teka way past his potential now at the 88. He's looking ridiculous. Olis is looking solid. Suleimana, uh, Suleimana and Daniel as well. Everyone in the attack is 88 rated, which is pretty nice to see. And there are two positions that we are looking at and thinking, okay, those are the clear spots to upgrade. It's Kalulu and Alemdar. Kalulu, I'm not going to sell. Alemdar, I might sell. But it's looking very good for the next season. I have a very good feeling about us and our chances in the Champions League. So the new season begins with 95 million and a manager rating of 58, which could get me fired easily. I need to work on the youth development objectives. Otherwise, I am done and, uh, and done and dusted over here in the league. Uh, now, obviously, this year, I want to win a lot. 95 mil will help us alongside that. I wanted to replace the goalkeeper, but I realized Alan that has gone up to an 83. It only takes him four weeks to go up to an 84. And Ilan Melier, the only actual French goalkeeper that would improve our team, is currently joining Real Madrid in this season, in this moment. So I can't get him, sadly. So that's not going to work out. So we're stuck with Alemdar. So mainly the right back position is the position that I'm looking at to improve. And that means I probably have to find a big giant defender in the name of Mukiele and bring him in. Let's try and get him immediately. Mukiele is 85 rated, 49 million value, definitely within our budget. The deal has gone through for 63.8 million. Mukiele is going to become our right back, but technically speaking, our right wing back. Kalulu still remains in the team as a good backup that we're going to have in the squad. I mean, I do have Bill Coor, but I like Bill Coor as a center back as well. So I might change him into that. But here he comes. The man with the 85 rating is going to improve our team a lot. So there it goes. 
Is he high, uh, lower rated in a different spot? Oh, so if I make him an actual right back, he could be uh, having a better time there. Now, the thing is, he's 28 years old at this point. I do wonder, is he still able to change his position even at this stage of his career? Is that a possibility? Yes, there we go. Two weeks and he'll be a right back. January, here we are. And guys, we are at number one right now in the league table. As you guys know, that doesn't mean anything. At the end of the season, that's where we need to be top. We were here many, many times and it just didn't work out. So hopefully we can get it done this time. Le Bleu doing good with 45 points and the team itself... He's looking exceptional right now. Nearly everyone in the attack is 90 rated. And Tekka has gone up to the 90. Olis and Daniel have done the same. Suleimana hopefully will follow. Uh, Kone has gone up to an 86. Chuameni 87. But the Ashil has gone up nicely. Even our left back has grown. Mukiela is currently struggling a little bit. Alemdar is doing okay, I guess. In 40 weeks, he can go up to the 84. He'll be fine at some point. Obviously, the goalkeeper being low rated does not help in simulations. So that is a little bit of an issue. But performance wise, we're looking at Enteca with 17 goal contributions in 25 games. Daniel with 15. Suleimana has nine goal contributions. Chouameni doing really well from midfield, helping out defensively and offensively as well, as you can see there. Now, do I expect this team to beat everyone and win the Champions League already? Not necessarily, especially because of the goalkeeper position. I think it's going to be a long road. But at least one good thing is that my manager rating this time is not below 60. So I'm very happy with that. I'll keep monitoring the contracts. Let's see how this season ends. It is January 2027. This is our sixth season. Let's see. Well, we are playing against Liverpool now in the Champions League semi-finals. Beat them in the first game 3-2. Second game, it's a draw. We're in the final. We're in the final, guys. Unreal. Only season six. I mean, we have won it earlier as well at some point, I believe. But season six, this team is going to be up in the Champions League final against Manchester City, which is something I'm extremely excited about because I do think City probably have an insane squad to come up against us. Manager rating is looking terrible, but who cares? Enteca, 91 rated. Unbelievable stats on him right now. Can't wait to try him out in the game. Olis looking unreal with 99 pace. The guy has 5-star, five 5-star five on him. Suleimana is on that left-hand side with an incredible stats as well. Uh, Daniel looking very solid. Chouameni with the 87. Kone with the 87. Trufford or Trufer, whatever, uh, with the 88. Badi Ashil and Simakan look like a good 87-rated partnership alongside each other. Mukiela has gone up to the 87 as well. Only our goal goalkeeper is low-rated. And for the rest of the squad, the bench. Are we ready? Are we ready to take them on? Shall we do this? Manchester City. Let's get it on. Let's see how this game goes. I'm extremely excited. Le Bleu against Man City. Let's start off by simulating and we'll obviously jump in in the big, big moments. They're playing with Sterling, Torres, Jesus, Wirtz, Foden, Ndombele, Zagadu, Diaz, Dumfries, Wow, man, that's a really good looking team. Holy moly. Looking like we are the white dots. Oh, please. Please. Olis. What a kit that is, by the way. Olis. Yes. Let's go, lad. He scores straight away. Oh, what a nice haircut. What a nice haircut that is. I love the haircuts that are just so like different to whatever any player on the pitch has. It just makes the feel makes the player feel a lot more individual. And straight away, without my help, technically speaking, they have gone ahead and smashed it in. At least one goal. This first goal in the Champions League. How has this man not scored yet? Well, Man City have a great team and they are not going to give up. That's the first chance for them in the eighth minute. And another one straight after. Corner kicks seem to be quite OP for them. They do get their chances over and over. But I want to counter-attack here. I want to see what Suleimana can do. I want to see what Enteca can do. How good are our players? Enteca, that's the run. Suleimana, it's a great ball into Enteca. Oh, come on. It just bounced right above him. Got a little bit unlucky there. Oh, Olis gets it back. Enteca, great turn. Left foot. Finish. Ooh. Good try. Good try. I like his height, though. He's, he's quite tall, isn't he? He looks like a very, very strong lad now with a lot of pace on him. Good pass in here. We move it down to the wings. Here goes Suleimana. Suleimana. 
Can he bang it by himself? The keepers are so good in this game. Ederson. Well done, mate. Enteka, can you head it for me, please? Go on, then. Enteka against Ruben Diaz and many, many more. Olis. Let's try that five-star week for the viewers. Oh, it's the crossbar. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, Olis. He is currently the standout player. Oh, that's a dangerous position. Phil Foden gets the equalizer. It's a beautiful pass across. Keeper couldn't have really done anything there. It's 1-1 in the Champions League final. Was that Phil Foden? I think it was. I mean, both of the players, the assister and the guy that scored, looked like Phil Foden to me. But Foden did score, yes. Oh, well. All right. Let's go. Let's keep it up. Let's try and get more out of this game. Go on then, Kone. Good steal. Kone pushing the team forward now. He has Enteka in support. It's a beautiful pass. Enteka runs past their son. And the defender just about gets there. That's ridiculous. Olis now making his run. Stops. Cuts inside over to his right foot. And it doesn't work. Nah. Oof, Alemdar, what a save. Man City, man. That was a huge, huge chance to score there. That's Daniel, our youth academy beast. Daniel, running through. He cuts in. Now goes back inside. Daniel, oh my. He's doing good things here. Love it. No. No. <sighs> it's 2-1. It's Florian Wirtz this time, isn't it? Or is that Ferran Torres? I can't even tell who the hell scored Torres. Ah, man, 2-1. Oh, well, they made a nice comeback happen. The team was better when I was not playing, when I was simming. <laughs> Great ball down the wing. I'm going to be waiting for my fullback to help me out here. Fullback is coming in. I see Olis in the center. Can he get that? Oh, we tried to volley that. I was kind of looking for a header, really, but okay. Here we got players moving into the right positions. Suleymana, I need you. Suleymana, what a finish. What a save. Chouameni, can you score? Can you score? It was a beautiful shot from him. Man, Man City under pressure now. Kone. Enteka. Enteka. Come on, lads. 91 rated for a reason. Unreal. Well done, mate. Well done. We're back into the game, boys. Come on. Come on, let's keep it up. 20 more minutes to go. I want to win this. And you're looking for a good run inside. We have Enteka again under control. Enteka! Great run. Man, he's incredible. Oh, that's a lucky pass. Enteka, though, holding his own. I see people far post. It's a great cross. Suleymana should have scored that. How does he How does he get that weird amount of power on it? No, don't do this to me now. This late into the game. Oh, my God. No way. Oh, my God. 92nd minute. We nearly conceded. Whew. We go into extra time. That was unreal from City. Good ball. And Tekka now again. Going to have to try and do something by himself here. Daniel looking for support. He finds it in the fullback. Fullback cross coming in. Straight into Enteka. And we just can't get it into the corner. Man, I cannot stop Sterling, can I? Oh. It's 3-2. <sighs> I can't believe this, man. <sighs> Raheem Sterling just... I, I can't stop him. He's, he's too good. Daniel. Now I'm making a move inside. Daniel. Still goes. Passes it. Good finish. I, how do you get past Ederson? Short corner again. Daniel. Goes through. Goalkeeper out of position. I see him. So oh, what? I thought that went in. I saw Ederson a little bit too far on the one side. Bro, it was green timed. How are not scoring these? Enteka. Come on, Olis. Is that a good through ball? It might just be. It might just be the only chance for us to score. It's not going to be. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose this. Or not. Maybe not. Come on. One more. Enteka. Great position. Yes. Enteka. 121st minute. What a legend. Oh, that puts us into the penalties, lads. Woo! All right. All right. <laughs> what a finish. What a freaking finish. Last minute chance used to the max. Wow. It's so hard getting past Ederson, bro. I'm telling you. And there we go into penalties. First penalty belongs to Silva. Bottom left. Yes. Come on. Alemdar, he might be low rated, but he can become a hero here. 
Olis, I love you. Bottom right, buddy. Bottom right, get him. Gabriel Jesus. Bottom right. Hey, why is my goalkeeper not moving, bro? <sighs> Gabriel misses it, though. Enteca, Enteca, you left-footed beast. Yes, come on. Let's go. All right. Endombele, Endombele. Ah, what a pen. Unreal. That is such a good pen from Endombele. Too many. We're going to go down bottom right. Yes. One, no, one more. One more save and one more scored. And we go through and win it. Bernardo Silva goes down the middle. Ah, of course. Okay, who's going to win it for us? Ederson against. Who is this? Sulemana. Oh, Sulemana, please. Sulemana, please, brother. No freaking way he saves that. Unreal. Unreal. Alemdar, can you do it for us? Florian Vietz. Bottom right. He goes top left. Bro, I'm under stress right now. I am under stress. Our left back is going to be the one taking this on. Yes! Come on! That's the end! We have won it! Le Bleu have done it, guys! The best wonder kids in France have done it. Mostly above 90 rated. I mean, a lot of them are, I should say. Not mostly, but what a team we have put together. Enteca is unbelievable, but the one standout player for me personally is Olis. He feels absolutely incredible in the game. I would highly recommend it to you guys. Give him a try. He is so nice on the ball. And if you get him to become a five-star, five-star player, he's just different gravy. So far, I think him and Musiala might be the two most effective players I've used or most fun players I've used in FIFA 22. Musiala was for a different video that we have done on Facebook Gaming. Make sure to follow your boy over there. But man... This team has deserved it. They have done exactly what they needed to do. And now they get to lift the trophy. Here goes Simakan lifting the trophy. The Champions League belongs to Le Bleu. Thank you guys so much for watching this Sprint to Glory. Make sure to go ahead and support us by checking out the sponsored link in the description down below. Huge thanks once again to FOTMOB for sponsoring this video. Very, very thankful for their support stuff like that means a lot to me personally to continue growing my brand thank you guys for watching i hope you guys will be back on the next one have a great day let me know in the comments down below which one we should be doing next take care and peace